In this section, we'll be covering plotting pandas date time data. Pandas and matplotlib go hand in hand. And so what I want to show you is all the different ways that you can plot data from pandas in matplotlib and you take full advantage of the date times that you're working with. The first thing that I want to show you is actually a little bit of a quirk on pandas side of things. If I were to generate some data, and this just comes from a random uniform distribution, um, and align it on some date time uh, index, and I simply plot it as a line plot, we get this actually fairly nice looking graph out. You know, we have uh, January of 2020 all the way up to December of 2021. But if I want to plot this data as a bar plot, we end up with something very messy. We end up with uh, labels that are all over the place um, that are not formatted as the date times that they should be representing. And this is because pandas does some unnecessary work under the hood when it comes to plotting bars. Uh, it assumes that bar plots are always categorical, which, I mean, in most cases, that's correct. However, in this case, my bar plots actually exist on a continuous spectrum. They don't con exist on a unique or categorical spectrum. And so when I plot this data, um, I end up with all those, all the labels that are highly overlapping. Every single bar is labeled, whereas maybe I just want an axis that looks just like this top one. One way that you can get around this is to actually um, maybe plot less of your data, right? Maybe with the overlapping labels, I've just plotted too much, so maybe I just want to plot less. And you can see, okay, I get a little bit around that problem, but now I just don't have as much data, right? I'm not representing my full distribution of data or my full timeline here. And so that's not always the answer that we want to go with. What we can actually do is we can, instead of plotting through the pandas plot accessor, we can plot through um, matplotlib. And if even if I were to downsample my data, they now exist on the correct x-axis. So in this case, I've sampled about 50% of my data. And you can see that my x-axis exists in the same space as my above x-axis, and that these bars actually have distances that um, make sense in terms of the broader context of my x-axis here, instead of being right next to each other as categoricals. If we're to actually inspect these categorical labels, you'll note that I can actually simplify them for you um, using the matplotlib uh, major formatters. And so what I can do here is I can actually set this major formatter to, I'm just going to need to rotate them as well, um, and then I will sample that down to a smaller scale. And so even when I have these dates, you can see that they're all January of 1970. And that's because Pandas has done away with the date times. It has brought in unique uh, categorical codes, factorized codes, that go from zero up to the length of my data. And then it brought, brings those date times back in and uses them as labels. Now, these labels are no longer interpreted correctly because of the swapping out for the categorical coding. And so that's why we end up with these very, very messy labels. But we can leverage uh, things like the like date formatters um, and also uh, locators in order to have full control over what our axis actually looks like. And so here you can actually see I'm going to change the top uh, plot such that instead of having uh, year hyphen month, I actually end up with month as a three letter name and then the year uh, below it, just below it. And so that's what you can do with things like our major or month locator. Um, and our date formatter. Uh, percent %b is what represents the month name, and percent %y gives us the full year. Additionally, if I wanted to really just have one label per bar, I could go ahead and do that. And so what all I need to do here is uh, get the x values, and I'll probably need to turn the sampling down just a little bit. Um, I can actually tap in to all of the rectangles that I've drawn as by calling bar, and then I set my x ticks wherever 
those bars exist. And you can see here that I've uh, appropriately labeled each bar. I could divide uh, by two of the width of each rectangle if I wanted to center them. And I could um, worry about overlapping text by either removing it or finding nearby groups, bars, and uh, singly labeling them. But that's just some of the ways that you can deal with datetime data date datas when you're plotting. Next, I want to get into a fun problem. I have data from various uh, regions of the United States that represent their demand for energy. How much energy do they consume or have they consumed um, within the 2019 calendar year? And so I can plot this in various different ways. This is what we call an area plot. And when we look at an area plot, this is to give us a relative uh, feeling for how much each of these areas demand out of the total proportion of um, all areas. So these areas are stacked on top of each other, kind of like a stacked bar plot. But since we're dealing with a continuous space, we prefer to represent these as lines that exist on top of other lines. And so if I were to simply just plot them as uh, lines all onto their own, you can see that our y-axis does get a little bit more spread out, things look less squished, um, but you lose that sense of relative, um, relative importance. I can't tell you which area is, um, how much more one area is than another in terms of its uh, demand, in terms of proportion of demand. All right. And so what we can do here is we can do just a little bit of data now or manipulation. We can create a, a total column and we can plot it again as our line plot. And we can see here that if we were to plot this area plot, that total column would be right the sum of all of our areas. But what I am really excited to share with you is how can we analyze this data at all scales of time, right? Whenever we're dealing with time, uh, time series analysis, we always, we're looking at something that kind of, you know, starts off like this. It's so messy and hard to make sense of. I mean, I can kind of make out a general shape here just by eyeballing it, but I have no idea, you know, what that would tell you or what it means in the grand scheme of things. Um, also, I want to be able to zoom in on any smaller patterns here, right? So can I, I can dial in, right, just on this area or something like that and maybe show it in a way that's intuitive, right, instead of having to zoom in and you just get garbage uh, close up. So the first thing that we can do is actually plot a, uh, a rolling mean, right, so in addition to plotting our total, we'll uh, smooth that data by taking three days worth of data at a time and calculating the mean, right? And then we move to the next three days in a sliding window fashion. And by doing this, we actually get a much better feel for the general pattern of the data. And what I'm gonna wanna do here is that these colors are highly contrasting with one another. So I'm actually going to turn the alpha down just a little bit on the top plot, such that you can see uh, much more clearly, right, the overarching pattern highlighted here in red as well as all the underlying individual data points, right, which are there as a reference to see, um, to check out whether or not everything is uh, corresponding, right? If I did too much smoothing, we would lose some of the pattern, but three days here is actually working quite well. Additionally, I'm gonna wanna set a title and Y label. And so I have US energy demand, and the this is actually in terms of uh, gigawatt hours. Um, I perform a conversion up here, right? It start, our data started off in megawatt hours, um, but our y-axis ended up getting quite large, so I changed that. Um, and then what we can do, I want to look at both weekly and seasonal patterns. So what that means is I want to examine every single week, week's worth of data, every single Sunday, every single Monday, every single Tuesday, right? And I want to see how much variance exists within those, but also is there some type of weekly pattern to energy demand uh, within the US? And so there are a few ways I could do this. I could either set up a new axis on the same plot, or I could uh, set an inset axis, which is what I'll end up doing here, on my top plot, on my major plot, and then I'll plot on it. But by doing this, we've actually plotted on top of our original data. So one of the tricks that we can do is we can set the Y limb um, 
in order to push our data upwards and so that our new plot that we're going to draw on does not overlap. And so now you see a nicely hovering uh, timeline just above our uh, lower plot that we'll be plotting some weekly uh, patterns onto. I can uh, then set my Y ticks and set uh, an X axis formatter to do away with some of the date time uh, on the bottom and get something that's a little bit easier to read. From here, I do a little bit more of data analysis. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the total column, right, that calculated total, because we're looking at all US and not individual regions anymore, and I'm going to group it by the day of the week. And I just reach into that date time index that I'm dealing with, I grab the day of the week, right, and so this will be give me actual values from 0 to 6. And so when I do this, I haven't yet plotted it, um, when I do this, you can see here, I want to show you my intermediate output. You can see that I end up with this date that goes from 0 to 6, and you have to read a little bit of the documentation to know what 0 through 6 actually corresponds to. It actually corresponds to days of the week, right? But starting at Monday. So our weekdays are 0 through 4, and then our weekend, Saturday, Sunday, are 5 and 6. When we want to plot these data, I want my sun I want my week to be Sunday to Saturday. So what I'll actually do is just do a little bit of shuffling of our data and then completely reassign the index. And so what I'm going to do here is I then plot that uh, calculated mean value. And I just need to show it. And when I calculate that mean value, you can see, I mean, a little bit of a pattern. I need to clean up these labels clearly. They're overlapping, but you can see that, on the weekends, we use there's a lower demand for energy than in the middle of the week, and which happens to peak in Wednesday. But how can we capture some of the variance around those values? Well, when we resampled our data um, on that weekly basis, we captured both the mean and the standard error of the mean. And we can actually use matplotlib's uh, fill between to draw a polygon that exists from the mean plus the standard error to the mean minus the standard error. And so we can fill between to get some type of confidence interval um, around our data to see how much variance occurs, and we can use a band to represent it. How sure are we that this mean right, is the exact value of energy demand? And then I'm going to do a few things. I'll, I'll clean up uh, those x ticks so they're not overlapping just by making less of them. I don't really need the y-axis here. I mean, it's good to know the relative values, but I'm really just looking at this for the pattern, right? We peak at Wednesday and Saturday, Sunday. Uh, on the weekends, there's less demand. And so this kind of concludes our weekly pattern. I want to do the same thing, but for seasonal. I want to look at this overall, uh, this year's worth of data, and see if I can deduce if there's any patterns. I can tell you that it does look like, right, in the hot months, right, this would be summer, right, between May and July, all the way up to November. We do see like a peak here, so energy demand probably correlates with uh, temperatures, right, needing to cool off. But let's see how well we can highlight that within our data. I'm going to go ahead and make another inset axis, and I'll put it just off to the right of my weekly analysis. And I want to show you uh, what the output looks like, so we're going to put this plot right here on the right, and then. I also want to show you, just by doing a simple group by, right, on each unique month, ignoring the year, right, this is different from doing a resample by month, I'm getting, again, the average and the standard error of the mean. This is the exact same thing I did for the above weekly analysis, and it's the exact same plotting code. Um, and so I just plot that seasonal mean, and then I fill between the mean plus or minus the standard error. And then I'll add a title, I'll clean up my x ticks a little bit, and now my x ticks correspond to uh, months of the year. And so I can set that uh, as appropriate, and now there you have it, a nice um, concentrated seasonal pattern. So you can see here in the cold days, right, we actually, there is some demand for energy, which drops as things start to warm up. And I wish I had temperature data to go along with this to verify this correlation or not. But as things tend to get hotter, there's a higher demand for energy in the peak of summer. And then as things cool off, there's less demand until we hit December and theoretically start this pattern over for the next year. And so that's great. You know, I've seen a weekly pattern. I've seen a seasonal pattern. I'm curious, can we find anything within a given day? And so just to level, 
I want to show you the fidelity of the data that I've collected here. And I actually collected it um, in Pacific time. Um, and so I only have data every six hours. So our ability to detect patterns on the day is going to be fairly limited since we only have four samples per day, but let's see what we can get. In order to uh, place, right, I already have a fairly, um, fairly messy infographic here. I wouldn't say messy, just a fairly compact infographic. I'm gonna pull everything over from the right um, in order to make a little bit more space. And so I can use the subplots adjust here on my figure. And then I'll place, go ahead and place an, an axis to do some more drawing on. And so I'm gonna split things up by seasonally. Um, and so all that means is I'm going to look at the winter months versus the summer months and see if I can find any hourly changing pattern. So within each winter month, right here, I subset my original data. I get the total column out where all the winter months occur. And then I perform a grouped operation on each hour. And I just get the mean. I'm not too interested in this standard uh, deviation here from that. And then if I were to print this data, and I'll go ahead and turn off my plot, uh, just so you can see what this looks like. And you see here on the top hand side, I just have four data points really to plot since we've averaged so much away. Um, but I'll go ahead and plot those and we'll see if there's any pattern that we can make sense of here. And so in order to plot those, um, I'll just tell you why I did that. I'll just go ahead and call dot plot, right? We just need a line and I'll, I'll make this orange and a slightly thicker line. And I'll go ahead and I'll set the XX, I'll set a title to indicate that it's the winter. And you can see that I've drawn a little plot on my right hand side. Now we only have four data points and it would be really nice if our data looped back around to 24 hours, even if it's a little misleading, right? It's not a full cycle. But what we can do is we can actually take this data and we can assign a new value at 24 and make it the same as zero. And so we can uh, complete a full cycle, right, of pattern. And we can see um, the general shape of things is that in the middle of the day, we tend to use more uh, or have a higher demand for energy than we do at midnight. And we can do the same thing for the summer months. I'm gonna draw new axes. I'm gonna list out all my summer months, four through 10. And then I'll go ahead and actually do the exact same thing. And you can see here that the summer months, it's pretty much the exact same as winter. Uh, these, uh, both these plots on the right hand side are represented, are sharing a Y axis as well as an X axis. And so they align perfectly, except you see that the summer is just offset by the winter just by a little bit. It's hovering above it, so to speak. And so we can see here that summer tends to have higher demand than winter, uh, regardless of the time of day. Lastly, we'll add a little bit of text to indicate that these are daily patterns over here on the right, and our main plot is the U.S. energy demand across a year. And I'll add just a little bit of uh, aesthetics here to indicate that these are separate uh, parts of a larger infographic or of a uh, larger visualization. But I think we've pretty neatly summed it up. We've summed up the, all the patterns I could think of from the U.S. energy demand data that we had from 2019. We can see here that there's an overall seasonal pattern uh, shifting from winter into the warmer months then back into winter. There is a weekly pattern where people tend to have uh, higher demand for energy in the middle of the week than on the weekends. And throughout each day, we have a fairly consistent pattern almost regardless of time of year where uh, there's a higher energy demand around the middle of the day than there is on either ends of the day. Now this just as a visualization, can't confirm any of these without uh, following up with some robust statistical analyses, but we'll save that for another time.